When author Stephen King wakes up in the morning, he knows that he'll be sitting down at his desk at 8 a.m. and writing 2,000 words. It's something he's been doing every day for the last 30 years. An aspiring author might hear this fact and put off their dream of being a great novelist like Stephen King because they know they don't have the drive or the discipline to sit down every day and pump out 2,000 words. But what the aspiring author fails to realize is that Stephen King uses as much willpower to start writing 2,000 words a day as they require to brush their teeth in the morning. Like most effective people, Stephen King turned a vital productive behavior into a daily habit that is effortless to execute. By making a behavior effortless to initiate, Stephen can reliably execute and produce work at a rate that allows him to be one of the best in his field. Highly productive people like Stephen King are like factory managers. They hire obedient workers, aka habits. They take the time and energy to train a habit so it can execute a task all on its own. This frees up the manager's energy to focus on other habits that will serve him. Eventually, the manager can show up to work, head upstairs to his office, and watch his obedient habits reliably executing tasks and pumping out work without him needing to motivate them to do any of it. Over the course of several years, a manager with well-trained habits produces incredible results, and he gets all the credit for it. His habits don't make his life boring. His habits are what allow him to have the energy and the financial resources to focus on what he enjoys. That's the beauty of well-crafted habits. If you would like the freedom that habits provide, you'll need to have a reliable way of hiring and training habits for your own personal factory. First, only hire one habit at a time. If you train more than one habit at a time, you fail to give each habit the time and attention it needs to become a productive member of your team. You'll need plenty of patience and motivation to onboard a habit, so make sure it's a habit worth investing in. I like to build habits that I know I'll need a year from now as badly as I need today. Like the habit of reading books every day to expand my knowledge and expertise. Once you've picked a habit worth hiring, make a contract with that habit before you start the onboarding process. The contract will establish three things, an explicit behavior, a minimum daily quota, and the stakes. In a study published in the British Journal of Health Psychology, researchers wanted to see if a person embarking on a two-week exercise program would exercise more if they explicitly wrote down the following behavior statement. During the next week, I will partake in at least 20 minutes of vigorous exercise on a day, at a certain time, and in a certain place. They filled in the day, the time, and the place to whatever suited them best. The researchers found that those who wrote down their intended behavior were three times more likely to complete their exercise program than those who never wrote down an intended behavior at all. Therefore, the first step to increase the chances of a habit becoming a productive member of your factory is to explicitly state when and where that habit will take action each day. For example, Every day after making my morning coffee, I will sit down at my desk and start reading a book related to the field I want to master. When trying to build a daily habit, research shows that failing to execute the habit for one day is not a big deal. It simply reduces your odds of adopting the habit by about 5%. But if you fail to execute the habit for two days in a row, you'll reduce the odds of adopting that habit by 55%. Miss more than two days in a row, and you'll reduce your chances of building that habit by 90 plus percent. Therefore, your primary goal when onboarding a habit is to make sure it doesn't miss more than two days of work in a row. To ensure your new habit is compliant with your never miss two in a row policy, you need to lower the minimum daily quota of work required. Renowned Stanford psychologist BJ Fogg says the only way to effectively adopt a new behavior is to either have an epiphany a radical change in your environment, or make the behavior tiny. Of these three options, the last one is available to all of us. When you develop a new behavior, you require motivation. Your motivation fluctuates from day to day and moment to moment. Trying to adopt a new behavior that requires a substantial amount of motivation is a low success strategy. However, if the intended behavior change only requires a tiny amount of motivation, your newly hired habit is less likely to miss two days of work and jeopardize its long-term success. Therefore, whatever your intended behavior change is, you need to scale it way back to a stupid small behavior. 
If you're hiring a daily writing habit, the minimum quota could be writing 50 unedited words a day about anything. If you are hiring a daily reading habit, it could be reading one page of a book a day. It doesn't matter how much a new habit outputs on any given day. The only thing that matters when onboarding a habit is making sure it shows up each day and becomes automatic. Anything a habit does beyond a stupid small minimum quota is simply a bonus. Now that you've laid out an explicit behavior and established a minimum quota for each day, you need to set some stakes. There is an accountability website called stick.com. People go to the site to declare their goals and assign a friend to keep them accountable to that goal. They also have the option of putting money on the line, money that they'll lose if they don't reach their goal. According to stick.com, the goal completion percentages from 2008 to 2011 for people who chose not to put money on the line was 34%. Those who offered to give up money if they failed to achieve their goal had a goal completion rate of 73% by simply putting their money where their mouth was, made them twice as likely to execute on an intended behavior. Therefore, the last part of your habit contract needs to include the following statement. If I fail to execute the minimum quota more than two days in a row, I will forfeit blank. This could be money or an opportunity to do something enjoyable that week, like go to a movie. Now, after the contract is complete, you're ready to start the onboarding phase. The phase is all about building trust in your new habit. You need to have low expectations for all new habits and only give them more responsibility after they've proven to you that they can show up to work day after day and do the bare minimum. If a habit misses a day of work, don't get upset. Just make it a priority the following day to schedule it on your calendar and to help it out. The onboarding phase ends when a habit has shown its ability to work without needing your encouragement. Like brushing your teeth, you will feel a natural urge to take action each day. According to the latest research, it takes on average 66 days for a habit to become automatic. It seems like a long time to only experience minimal results, but remember that if you invest in a habit for those 66 days, that habit could serve you for a lifetime. Once a habit seems automatic and the onboarding phase is complete, you can slowly promote that habit and allow it to take on more and more responsibility. This involves raising the daily minimum quota a little bit at a time. So if you're reading one page a day, it turns into five for a couple weeks, then 10, then 20, and so forth. When you're ready to promote a habit, you can then onboard the next habit. You'll eventually get great at onboarding habits and you'll experience less and less resistance to adopting vital productive behaviors. So if you hire and train the right productive habits, you'll generate incredible results over the span of several years somewhat effortlessly. Writing 2,000 words a day could feel as automatic to you as it does to Stephen King, and writing 54 novels like he has won't be that far out of reach. As Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence is not an act, but a habit. If you would like a one-page PDF summary on how to hire a habit and how to make execution effortless, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribe to the free Productivity Game newsletter, this PDF is already in your inbox. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a productive week.